Hello, I'm Kendara Blake, author of the Three Dark Crown series and this season's Epic Reads author in residence. And yes, this is a smoking jacket. Today, I am recommending to you the classics. So, like, I wanted to be like uh, Cookie Monster in Monster Peace Theater, and I just happened to have this laying around from an old Halloween costume. I repurposed it years later to be the Karate Kid. Like, I did that like, little dojo thing on my back. Talent. And who knew I would one day have the opportunity to wear it in a book recommendation video. So, let's get started recommending some classics. I'm a little bit liberal with what I allow on my classics shelf. Um, it doesn't necessarily, you know, if I feel like it's classic, if it's like a modern classic, uh, it doesn't have to have vintage classics written on the spine. I just kind of throw it up there because I feel it has earned its place. So some of you may disagree that these are even classics, but, um, you know, organize your own shelf. Classic number one. Is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. The story of a young, spunky governess just has a lot of gumption and she goes to be the governess after enduring a childhood just full of abuse and no respect. Um, and she's kind of a little odd too. And she goes to Thornfield Hall, which is a grand house with many, many secrets and works as a governess for her shadowy employer, Mr. Rochester, and numerous, you know, romantic and creepy things ensue. Jane Eyre is probably the first classic that I ever read. Um, my mom used to buy me books all the time when I was a kid, and every once in a while she would sneak something like this into the pile, and I'd be like, Mom, you know, what's this? And she's like, oh, it's Jane Eyre, and I'm like, what's it about? And she's like, I don't know, uh, but give it a whirl. So I would, and I really, really loved it. Um, Jane Eyre, I think, is one of the most accessible of the classics. The language and the writing style feels extremely modern, and, well, it's just, uh, it's, it's, she's a very, Jane is a very relatable character. Um, I think I've read this, you know, just cover to cover, just repeatedly in my youth, and I probably am due to do it again uh, if I ever have time to do a reread. You can see like it's, it's this, my copy is so well loved and yellowed and disgusting, but I'm never getting rid of it. I love this book. I love it a lot. Oh, and my favorite adaptation of it is not the Mia Wasikowska one because she's just too pretty. She's too pretty to be Jane. Um, my actually, my favorite adaptation is like the 1996 version with uh, William Hurt and Charlotte Gainsbourg. Not that Charlotte Gainsbourg isn't gorgeous, I think she's absolutely stunning, but they, they really plane her up. They just plane her down and um, yeah. So if you have a chance to read the book and watch the movie, I recommend the old one from 1996. Next up, <clears throat> oh, yes, good, is Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Oh, it took me way too long to read this. I have been recommended this by horror lovers for such a long time. Um, it's a very spooky book. Um, it's not horror in a slasher sense, but it is, it is very creepy and uh, the language and the writing is just beautiful. I often use this one as an example of how you can sometimes really enjoy a book despite unlikable characters or not liking the characters very well. I really dislike both Constance and Maricat Blackwood. Like if I was there and, and you know, they were pulling all these shenanigans on me, I'd be like, no, I probably, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. They're, they're lovely young women, but no, they really got on my nerves when I was reading this. Uh, and yet I enjoyed reading about them nonetheless. So if you were looking for an elegant yet spooky classic, I highly recommend Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle, or really anything by, uh, by Shirley Jackson. It's lovely. Also, I really want to read a biography about her. Um, I just bought uh, Shirley Jackson's biography. She just seems like she lived an interesting life. Okay. Third classic recommendation is a children's book, Black Beauty by Anna Sewell. Um, I read this when I was a child, but I still remember it fondly today. Obviously, this was not the copy that I owned as a child. The copy that I owned as a child, I read so much that it just literally just fell apart in my hands. 
So I liked it enough that I bought another edition in my adulthood. Um, haven't really sat down to reread it yet, but I remember it so vividly. Um, I like books that, you know, show empathy for animals. I like books from from the viewpoint of animals. I'm um, just about to read a book called The Bees, which is from the perspective of a bee. Um, I once really enjoyed a book by Robert Bakker uh, called Raptor Red from, from the viewpoint of a dinosaur, and that was interesting to say the least. But this one is Black Beauty. It's from the viewpoint of a horse. Um, a working horse, not a pet horse, although he should have been a pet horse because he was delightful. Um, and it's, it's just, it's, I think it's just a good book for people to read because so many people are just butts to animals. Like so many people in this book are just butts to Black Beauty. And I mean, he's a beauty. So how are they treating the ugly horses? It's just disturbing. Highly recommend. Okay, and I would not be me if I did not recommend this next classic to you. This is Iliad, the Iliad by Homer. Homer may or may not have been an actual person or may have just been an amalgamation of uh, many different uh, verbal storytellers. This was often a story told by bards in bits and pieces as they traveled the countryside uh, before um, histories were really written down. Uh, the Iliad is the story of part of the Trojan War. So it opens with, oh God, I can't remember where it opens. Oh God, where does it open? They've been at war for a while and then it ends and I actually, I, I don't really want to tell you where it ends, but I will because you should know by now. It ends with uh, <clears throat> the funeral of Hector, who uh, Hector was the hero of Troy. Um, Achilles was the hero of the Greeks, and sometimes, you know, some classics, to really appreciate them, you actually, it's, it's better if you're taught them, you know, so you, you, your teacher can, like, point out the historical context, and, uh, you know, you can understand the, the dated language a little bit better, like, I think Shakespeare is more enjoyable when it's seen, or at least when it's taught, so that I can really understand all the weird thumb-biting references and stuff that Shakespeare was putting in there. But I still think that the Iliad, which is an epic poem, um, is enjoyable just reading on its own. I'll still flip through and I'll just read some of my favorite passages because the language is beautiful and it's so just battle, just battle-esque and um, the glory of the gods and all of that really good stuff. So if you really enjoy Greek mythology and you haven't read the Iliad yet, highly recommend. I prefer the Lattimore translation because it doesn't get too flowery. Um, follows the, the same the same meter that it's supposed to, you know, dactylic hexameter or whatnot. But uh, it, it, it doesn't add a lot. I find him to be very stripped down, which, which I enjoy, and I think it goes well with the warlike descriptions in, in the poem. So, the Iliad. And if you want to follow it up, go ahead, follow it up with the Odyssey. Two different kinds of books. This is a very much a war book, and the Odyssey is very much a quest adventure book, but, you know, both good. And my final classic recommendation this week, Michael Endy's The Never-Ending Story. You might not agree, this might, you know, this might not qualify as necessarily a classic in your book because it's not that old. Um, I don't know if Michael Endy has passed away or, but, I mean, it's, it's not that old, but I still consider it like a children's classic. It is um, such a masterwork of fantasy. I fell in love with the movie when I was a kid and I read the book as an adult and if you think the movie was weird and fantastical, I mean this is just, is just weird. I just loved it. Uh, somewhere out there there is a um, like an original, like a, a collector's edition that, that is written in like different colored inks. Um, but I mean it, it's, you know, the classic tale of Bastion Balthazar Bucks and the book that comes to life. So he's reading it and the story is happening and eventually he's just part of the story, like he's reading himself into the story. It is the ultimate book nerd's fantasy and I, I love it. Um, the movie also has one of my favorite bookish speeches about, um, you know, like why we shouldn't protect 
or censor people from reading what they want. Uh, when the old guys like, you know, when you're reading about Captain Nemo and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, weren't you scared? And Bastion's like, no man, it's a book. And, uh, you know, that, I think that's the philosophy that my mother employed when she was raising me because she'd let me read just about anything. She's, okay, it's a book. She's reading. The battle is won. Um, I love the classics. I know some people find the classics a little bit dry, but I like the classics because, well, it feels like there's a finite number, and I know I just keep adding to them, so I'm just disobeying my own rules. But it feels like, some, like one of my supreme frustrations is that I'll never get to read all of the books that I want to read before I die. But I feel like I could make a really good dent in the classics. So no matter what I'm reading, I always like to have a classic going at the same time. And um, sometimes I end up really loving them, or at least learning something. And sometimes I end up really hating them. So, um, oh, just one second, I'll be right back. I'll uh, show you a classic I hated and then a classic that I'm about to start. And this is a classic, the classic that I'm about to delve into while I concurrently read other books. Uh, this is Thomas Wolfe's You Can't Go Home Again, which I believe was edited by the same editor who worked with F. Scott Fitzgerald. So I have no idea what to expect. I've heard that he can really turn a phrase, um, but that uh, he can just, you know, go on and on and on. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, clearly this bad boy is gonna take me a while. If you ask me what classic I'm reading next year, it may still be this one. I hope this inspires you to pick out a few classics of your own and give them a whirl. You never know what you might find. And next time, I probably won't be in costume because I really want to spread the costumes out. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to be recommending next time either, but I will be back again. Um, there will be a total of eight videos and this is just number two. So I will see you next time. Be sure to subscribe to Epic Reads for more great bookish content and follow me on, uh, let's see, where am I? I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on Instagram. That's, that's pretty much the extent of it. But okay, happy reading! Hi, I'm Kendara Blake, author of the Three Dark Crown series. Thank you so much for watching. For more videos, click here, and to subscribe to Epic Reads, click here.